Alright, this is going to be an Arch Linux install tutorial using my Arch Linux install script. So the first thing you're going to want to do is go ahead and get booted into the Arch ISO using whatever installation media you choose. Once you get into the ISO, you're going to want to go ahead and check your connection, so you'll ping google.com. Once you're sure you have an internet connection, you can go ahead and w get my install script, so you can wget dash capital O for output, we're going to output it to arch installer dot sh and then the link and the full command will be in the description you're going to go ahead and paste the link into there and press enter and what that did is it outputted a file called archinstaller.sh which is actually my install script so what we're going to do first is go ahead and make that executable so we can run it so we're going to chmod plus x archinstaller.sh and press enter so we ls again we can see that it's highlighted so it's actually executable so we can actually go ahead and run this now so to do that we're going to go ahead and type period forward slash archinstaller.sh press enter now from here you're actually in the program interface so the first thing you're going to do is go ahead and select your locale the first four are defaults all the others are in other um, we're going to go ahead and select a UTF-8 one. I recommend sticking with UTF-8. Okay, next you're going to select your time zone from this long list of time zones. Um, I'm going to go ahead and select US. You're going to select your subzone if necessary. I'm going to select Eastern. Okay, next you're going to set your key map. I don't recommend changing this unless you know what you're changing it to. Otherwise, it's usually okay to just leave it default US. Next it's going to give you a list of drives. You're going to select which drive you want to install Arch onto. It's going to give you the drive letters and it's also going to give you the size of the drive. You should know by the size which drive is which. This is actually a virtual system which I have four virtual drives connected to just for example. Um, we're going to go ahead and select the biggest one which is SDA of 8 gigs. So I'm going to go ahead and select your drive and press enter. Next it's going to ask you if you want to do auto or manual partitioning. Um, auto partitioning will erase the entire drive and install Arch onto it. Manual partitioning gives you the ability to create the partitions yourself and choose where you want to install Arch. Um, for this video we're going to go ahead and do auto partition. So press enter. It's going to prompt you will erase all drive on the drive you selected. Be sure you have everything backed up before you continue. Go ahead and hit yes. Okay, it's going to prompt you to create swap space. If you have less than 2 gigs of RAM, I recommend creating a swap space of the size of 2 gigs, so you can do 2G for gigs. If you have more than 4 gigs of RAM, you can probably get away with doing 512 megabytes. Um, the thing to be sure about here is just be sure you align it to either gigs for gigabytes or M for megabytes, so either G or M. Okay, so I'm just going to do the default, which is 512 megs. Go ahead and hit enter. Would you like to use GPT partitioning? We're going to do no. Okay, it's going to go ahead and format, partition, and mount the drives for you. And now it's going to ask, would you up like to update your mirror list? We're going to go ahead and do yes to ensure we got a nice quick download. Okay, it's going to give you a list of country codes for which mirror list you want to choose. Okay, we're going to go ahead with United States. Just choose whatever is closest to you. Okay, now it's going to prompt you to begin installing the base system onto the drive you selected. We're going to go ahead and click yes. Okay, it's going to go ahead and sync your package databases. And then it's going to go ahead and start downloading all the packages. The amount of time this takes really is going to be based off your internet speed. It 
once the packages are all downloaded it goes ahead and starts installing them as you can see here we're installing the Linux kernel Alright, so the install is complete. Arch is now installed to the drive we selected. So if you have a 64-bit architecture, it's going to go ahead and prompt you if you want to add the multi-libbed repos to your Pac-Man configuration. Um, you're going to want to go ahead and hit, if you're prompted for this, you're probably going to want to go ahead and hit yes. So we're going to do yes for that. Would you like to add the French user repositories to your Pac-Man configuration? Um, we're going to go ahead and do yes for that as well. Next it's going to prompt you to set the host name. The default is Arch. You can set this to pretty much whatever you want. We're going to do Arch V Box because this is a virtual box install. Go ahead and set it to what you want. Press enter. Next it's going to prompt you for the root password. I recommend setting this to something strong. Okay. Next it's going to ask you to create a sudo user. I recommend creating a user now. Go ahead and set the username to whatever you like and the password. Note that the password box will not move as you type, but it is typing. Okay, it's going to ask to enable sudo privilege for members of Wheel. Basically, what this is going to do is it's going to give your user sudo privilege so you can use sudo to administer your computer instead of needing to log in as a root. Um, if you select no to this, you won't be able to use the sudo command, so you're most likely going to want to go ahead and select yes. Enable DHCP at boot, dynamic host control protocol. What that does is it leases an IP from your router, so you don't have to set up your IP configuration information yourself. So you're going to want to do this so you have internet when you boot. Enable SSH at boot, secure shell is amazing and I don't know why anybody wouldn't want it but you can select that here okay now it's going to ask to install grub the grand unified bootloader which is the bootloader which will make our install actually bootable and it's going to ask to install it to our device so we're going to go ahead and hit yes it's going to go ahead and download grub it's going to install it to our drive and it's going to make the configuration for us Okay, once that's all done, we actually have a fully installed Arch system, so it's going to prompt you if you want to reboot. Um, normally you would go ahead and hit yes and remove the installation media. We're going to hit no, actually. And it's going to say system was installed, so it's just going to exit. So as you can see, 6 minutes and 49 seconds for the total time of the install. So we're going to go ahead and this is our actual virtual system here. So what we're going to do is go ahead and remove the disk image. We're going to force unmount that. And we're going to go ahead and restart. Okay, so now as you can see we're into a fresh arch install here. Okay, here we are. Arch VBox, just like we said. Go ahead and log in as the user I created with the password I set. And there you have it, a full Arch install in under 10 minutes using my install script. Hope you guys enjoyed it, and thanks for watching.